TVA versus Hill. Damn that fish. The Supreme Court case, TVA versus Hill, was a landmark lawsuit in endangered species conservation because it strengthened the Endangered Species Act of 1973, led to a balancing of the needs of both land developers and endangered species, and increased awareness of the Endangered Species Act. Background. Endangered Species Conservation. Since the beginning of time, animals and plants have vanished from the face of the earth. The dinosaurs, the saber-toothed tigers, and the woolly mammoths that once walked this planet are now gone forever. In fact, scientists estimate that the 3 to 10 million species alive today only represent 2 to 4 percent of all the species ever to live. Extinction is a natural part of Earth's life cycle. But ever since the beginning of the Industrial Revolution in the 1800s, extinction has been occurring at an alarmingly high rate. Between 1800 and 1970, the rate of extinction increased by over 5,000 percent. For example, between when Europeans first arrived in Hawaii in 1788 and 1970, 36% of the bird species there became extinct. Furthermore, 50% of the insects and all of the mammals in the island state were classified as endangered. During the last century, however, the United States has become a leader in endangered species conservation. In 1900, Congress passed the Lacey Act, which allowed the federal government to punish those in violation of state wildlife laws. This was followed by the Migratory Bird Treaty Act of 1918, and conservation efforts continued with the Endangered Species Conservation Act of 1969. None of these efforts proved to be very effective, however. Finally, on December 28, 1973, President Richard Nixon, a strict environmentalist, signed the Endangered Species Act, protecting plants as well as animals. The Endangered Species Act had three main goals. To protect the habitats of endangered or threatened species, to create plans to protect those species, and to uphold any previous conservation laws or treaties. Under the Endangered Species Act, species were classified under two categories. Endangered, likely to become extinct, or threatened, close to becoming endangered. The act made it illegal for any U.S. citizen to import, export, injure, kill, transport, sell, buy, reduce to possession, or damage the habitat of any endangered or threatened species. Section 7 was by far the most controversial section in the Endangered Species Act. It required that no federal agency may build on or near the designated critical habitat of an endangered species if it would in any way impair the population of that species. Section 7 led to several dozen lawsuits on behalf of endangered species. One of the most famous of these lawsuits was a debate between a multi-million dollar dam and a three-inch fish that got in its way. This lawsuit was called Tennessee Valley Authority v. Hill. Debate and Diplomacy The Supreme Court Battle In 1973, ichthyologist David Etnier stumbled upon a fish in the Little Tennessee River not far from the nearly completed Telgo Dam. The fish was roughly three inches long, light brown, and resembled a perch. He had discovered a new species, Persina tenacei, or the snail darter. This rare little fish resided solely in a 17-mile stretch of the Little Tennessee River and had a population of less than 1,000. It was added to the endangered species list in 1975. The Teleco Dam was a project of the Tennessee Valley Authority, or TVA. The dam was first examined as a possibility in 1936, but was put on hold because of World War II and was not re-examined until 1966 when the project received funds from Congress. Construction began on the dam in 1967. The dam had cost $116 million to build as of the mid-1970s, and when the stalinator was discovered, the TVA had no intention of halting construction. Debate raged around Teleco Dam from the time it was conceived. Many residents in the nearby Teleco Valley endorsed the dam because it would generate hydroelectric power for the surrounding area in addition to creating hundreds of jobs. Several groups opposed the construction of the dam, however. The most vocal group in this debate was the Fort Loudoun Association. Fort Loudoun was a nearby historical landmark located in between the Little Tennessee River and the Teleco River. Completing Teleco Dam would cause the Little Tennessee River to flood destroying the natural geological location of Fort Loudoun in between the two rivers. In his little book, Little Fish in a Pork Barrel, Segment Plato quotes an opponent of the dam. Imagine what it would be like for us to stand here on this knoll in 25 years, looking out over an algae-filled reservoir, old silos sticking out from the water, erosion washing open Cherokee graves. Imagine us saying to our grandchildren, we could have stopped this. Meanwhile, an environmental law student, Hiram G. Hill, 
learned from fellow biology students about the discovery of the snail darter, and asked a law professor, Sigmund Platter, if the impact of the dam on the survival of the species would make a good topic for a 10-page paper. Platter convinced the young student to embark on a lawsuit against the TVA, and together the two began one of the biggest environmental lawsuits in the history of the Endangered Species Act. The case first went to the Tennessee District Court. Here, the judge wrote that, although completion of the dam could cause the snail netter to become extinct, the TVA would still be allowed to complete Telco Dam because the budget for the dam had already been 95% spent and the project was nearly completed. Next, the debate was brought to the Sixth Circuit Court of Appeals. Here, the judge determined that completion of the dam would clearly violate the Endangered Species Act and construction was discontinued. In 1978, Hill and Platter went up against the United States Attorney General Griffin Bell and the Tennessee Valley Authority once again, in the process becoming the first court case under the Endangered Species Act to go all the way to the U.S. Supreme Court. Hill argued that Section 7 of the Endangered Species Act clearly states that no action by a federal agency, such as the destruction of critical habitat, may jeopardize any endangered species. TVA argued that, because construction began on the dam before the Endangered Species Act was passed, the act did not apply. And, because Congress continued to fund Teleco even after the act was passed, Congress fully intended the dam to be completed. Attorney General Bell argued that, Congress, three times, 75, 76, 77, said go forward with this project. We know about the snail daughter. Go forward. We intend for you to complete this project. In the end, the Supreme Court ruled 6-3 to three that completion of the dam would destroy the only known habitat of the snail daughter and that the Endangered Species Act clearly prohibits development on the habitat of endangered species. The dissenting judges believed that the Snell Darter won merely because of the phrasing in the Act, and that Congress, when writing the Act, did not intend for it to actually stop projects already in progress. Ultimately, however, Hill and Platter failed. In 1979, Congress voted 48-44 to 44 to finally allow completion of Telco Dam and Telco Reservoir began to fill on November 29, 1979. Successes, Failures, and Consequences of TVA v. Hill In 1978, the First Amendment to the Endangered Species Act included the creation of the Endangered Species Committee, or the God Squad. The creation of this committee was a direct result of TVA v. Hill and was an important success for environmentalists everywhere. The formation of this committee strengthened the Endangered Species Act by creating a diplomatic way to solve disputes between land developers and endangered species. Developers wishing to build on land that had been designated critical habitat could appeal to the committee for an exemption to the Endangered Species Act. The committee would debate the benefits of the proposed project versus the consequences of the possible extinction of a species. The full effect of TVA v. Hill in balancing the conflict between land developers and endangered species was not seen until over a decade after the Supreme Court first delivered its decision when a small owl threatened an enormous industry. In 1990, the Northern Spotted Owl was declared threatened under the Endangered Species Act. The problem resided in the Northern Spotted Owl's newly protected habitat. 5.4 million acres of old-growth forests in Oregon, all ideal for logging. When these forests were designated critical habitat, representatives from the logging industry appealed to the Endangered Species Committee on the grounds that protection of the Northern Spotted Owl could cost the logging industry 12,000 jobs and over $3 million annually. The Endangered Species Act failed in the end, however, when the committee rolled 5-2 to two in favor of the loggers, granting them an exemption and allowing restricted logging on protected habitat. TVA v. Hill also succeeded by increasing awareness of the Endangered Species Act. To date, over 1,000 cases have cited TVA v. Hill. For example, in Palila v. Hawaii Department of Land and Natural Resources, the court ruled in favor of the Palila bird, a bird whose habitat was being destroyed by hordes of feral sheep which were ordered to be removed. Another famous case, Babbitt v. Sweet Home Chapter of Communities for a Greater Oregon cited TVA v. Hill in order to explain the seriousness of the Endangered Species Act. Tennessee Valley Authority v. Hill used rhetoric and diplomacy to change the way people viewed endangered species. It led to the creation of the Endangered Species Committee under the Endangered Species Act of 1973, resolved the debate between land developers and conservationists, as seen in the case of the Northern Spotted Owl, and increased awareness of endangered species and their habitat.